So I apologise for getting dishevelled in this and a couple of upcoming videos. We film these on a day we don't normally do and it's the day I happen to go to the gym. So I'm a big sweaty mess right now. So sorry about that. <laughs> Given the demographics of the people who watch this channel, I'm going to guess that you watching at home know Raul Julia from one of two roles, that of Gomez Adams from the Adams Family, or that of M. Bison from the Street Fighter movie. As you may or may not know, that latter role turned out to be Julia's last and he died of cancer a short while later. For critics, this seemed like a sad end for such a great actor's career. However, Julia would have disagreed, because he didn't take the role for critics, or even fans. He took it for his kids. To explain, before Julia was primarily known for playing the stone-ass, suave, pimp-ass motherfucker known as Gomez Adams, <laughs> Julia was a very accomplished and respected actor, both in his native Puerto Rico and in America. What kind of roles did he play? Usually, Julia would play astonishingly handsome Puerto Rican men with amazing names such as Joaquin Monero or Raphael the Fix-It Man from Sesame Street. Yes, that's right, Raul Julia was in Sesame Street. Uno, dos, tres. So you said that Street Fighter was his last film? Yes, he died of cancer shortly after filming it, and uh, the film was dedicated to his memory, and a lot of critics didn't like this, because obviously Julia had a, a really long and prolific career where he had a lot of serious roles for which he got a lot of critical praise. So critics felt like him being like a megalomanic dictator in a stupid video game adaptation is kind of a bad end to his career. And in fact, the film he did just before Street Fighter was one called The Burning Season, which is a made-for-TV movie for which he won a posthumous Golden Globe and Emmy. And a lot of critics felt like that would have been a more fitting end to his career. And Raul Julia, if he'd have been alive, would have told him to fuck off the edge of his awesome Puerto Rican dick. Because he loved filming that Street Fighter movie, as we're about to discuss. So just as a reminder, which character was he playing in Street Fighter? Well, Raul Julia played none other than M. Bison, the final boss of a lot of the Street Fighter games. <laughs> Julia's take on the character was a little bit different from the games, but was mostly the same, um, in that he's a megalomaniac dictator who wants to take over the world, who dresses like gay Hitler and also flies. That, that sounds like an amazing character. That sounds like an amazing... Like, if I was an actor and I wanted my final role and I had to pick something, it'd definitely be along the lines of megalomaniac flying dictator in a purple cape who fires lightning from his hands. <laughs> you know, because that sounds awesome. If I remembered for a final role, what do your final role be? Punching Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's a good final role for a guy known primarily for serious dramatic roles. <laughs> At like the Emmys and Golden Globes, they'll have that reel where they go through his greatest works and the end on a shot it's of him. Just M. Bison, just firing lightning from his fingertips into the sky. In slow motion with like one of those like nice bits of music in the background. Just him hamming it the fuck up, man. Do not presume so much on my good nature. One thing I want to point out, and a lot of people know, is that Raul Julie was dying of cancer the entire time they were making this movie. Like, he knew that he was dying when he took this role. Why would he take a role that he'd be remembered for be like being so daft if he knew he was dying? Because he just wanted one last chance to ham it the fuck up. And also get a free trip to Australia for him and his family. And he knew that his kids would get a kick out of watching their dad beat up Jean-Claude Van Damme. You know what, that's a pretty noble goal, isn't it? It's like, I've got one last movie in me. I've got one, one role. What are they offering me? And he looks through all these scripts and he sees one. It's a Street Fighter the movie. So what the hell is Street Fighter? And he looks over and he sees his kid playing it on like the SNES or something. And he just sees this guy with a giant um, yellow flat top backflip kicking this dude in like a Nazi hat with a purple cape. And he went, that is going to be the movie role for me. <laughs> and as soon as I mentioned uh, um, the, the, the title of the film, um, all of a sudden their, their faces lit up. It's really nice that though, to think that his last film decision was made purely so that his kids would have something nice to remember him by. I know, what an amazing idea. It's like, 
do my kids want to watch me like dying in a hospital bed of cancer feeling sorry for myself or would they rather go to australia and spend like a couple of weeks watching their dad get up every morning and beat the living piss out of Jean-Claude Van Damme while also flying around on these wires on a sound stage while giving these giant rambling Shakespearean speeches. That's awesome! What a great memory they now have of their father. Come here, prepare to fight a madman, and instead you found a god? <laughs> Something I'd like to mention with people watching at home as well is that despite dying of cancer throughout the entire production process, Raoul Julia didn't let it slow him down and actually threw himself into the role both physically and mentally. So what kind of things did he do? Well, for starters, despite dying of cancer, he still like, took part in a punishing martial arts training regime, so his fight scenes could look somewhat decent against Jean-Claude Van Damme. And he also spent a couple of weeks researching historical dictators and so he could better emulate their mannerisms and speech patterns while giving those long rambling M. Bison speeches in the movie about like what, how he wants to take over the world. All I want to do is to create the perfect genetic soldier. Not for evil, but for good. I love it when actors put so much effort into shit roles. I love it. And that's the best thing, because like, critics did note this and said like, it's a bad movie but Raoul Julie is the best part. He's clearly the one who took it the most seriously. Because he did, he wanted his kids to be able to watch it and say, that's my dad on screen, that's my dad flying around. But yeah, he really did take it seriously. Like, he studied a lot of like footage of historical dictators talking so he could like, their mannerisms and their manner of address. He wanted to get it just right, because that's what M. Bison was supposed to be in that movie. If he was the best part of the film, did he have an impact on the games? He did. Um, uh, Capcom as a nod to Raul Julia. One of the most famous lines in that movie, one of the most hammy, shitty, cringeworthy lines is where he goes to Chun-Li and says, the day M. Bison visited your village, I'm probably murdering this, but I'll get the quote somewhat right. The day M. Bison visited your village for you was the turning point of your life or something like that. The day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. For me, it was just a Tuesday. But for me, it was Tuesday. And it's such a bad line, but Capcom put it into the games, so M. Bison actually says that in like Street Fighter V as a nod to Raul Julia. So, considering the fact that Raul Julia was dying of cancer the entire time he was making this movie, took the role purely for his kids, and then still found the time to engage in a punishing physical training regime so that he could beat up Jean-Claude Van Damme, he'd have to be kind of a dick to shit on his performance, right? So you probably see where I'm going with this, can't you, Brad? Did someone insult his performance? Yes, they did. While most critics said the movie was bad, but Raul Julia's performance as M. Bison is the single shining moment in it. Like, Raul Julia makes this movie, and I think even today, people reviewing it say the best part of the entire movie is just Raul Julia hamming it the fuck up. Um, one critic for Variety said that it was Julia's weakest ever performance. So just so we're clear here, a writer for Variety criticised a performance given by an actor who was dying of cancer that involved beating up Jean-Claude Van Damme and giving long rambling Shakespearean speeches in a long flowing cape as weak. Now I don't know about you watching at home, but that sounds like the exact opposite of weak to me. Game over! Intruder destroyed. Intruder destroyed. So I'm guessing like me and like most of people watching at home, Brad, you only really know Raoul Julia from the Addams Family movies. Yeah, pretty much. And I'd like to just like reassure you by saying that if he was still alive, Raoul Julia would have been okay with that. So even though he had a lot of like other more dramatic roles, um, his wife would later report that like while he was like dying and while he was like on his deathbed, one of the things that did bring him joy was a lot of kids coming up to him and recognising him as Gomez Adams. So that's a nice little thing there if you're watching at home. In addition to like going all the way to Australia and like having a chance to beat up Jean-Claude Van Damme in front of his kids, he was also constantly stopped by people going, Yo, Gomez Adams, which brought a smile to his face in his dying days. Isn't that lovely? It's nice. So what's your favourite part of the Adams Family movie then? I've got a good one. I'm probably the Mamushka. The dance. The, yeah. That's a really strong one <laughs> with like the juggling the swords and all that. I think mine is more understated one and it's where Thing is trying to get a message across. Gomez just says, I can't understand you when you stutter. Slow down! It's terrible when you stutter! And as an adult, I got it, but as a kid it went straight over my head. But as an adult, I saw that and laughed my ass off. Do you know my favourite thing about the Adams Family? What? It's that the kid who plays Pugsley Adams 
when he grew up, his headshot is now the meme image of Tips Fedora. <laughs> I think we mentioned that before. I have, <laughs> have ever told you about the thing one of my mates does whenever he plays Call of Duty online? <laughs> he does, and we turn it into a dance move. It's, it's headshots, Tips Fedora, leave server. <laughs> So we developed an entire dance in nightclubs around this, where you go up to a girl, you 360 no scope, you tip the door and you leave. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the whole point is, how many girls can you get away with doing that to? So while you're just in the club, it's like, you're dancing, it's just headshot, tips the door and leave server. <laughs> now that's where you invite the people at home, next time you go out dancing, incorporate that dance move. <laughs> Does it have to be during an encounter where you feel like you're succeeding? It's got to be, yeah. It's got to be against a girl. You've got to be dancing the girl. It's going to be headshot, tips fedora, leave server. And you're not allowed to go back. <laughs> Try it, man. It's fucking awesome. Oh, that's nice. Oh, done.